Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we'll unlock the book in praise of shadows written by the renowned Japanese writer Junichiro Tanizaki. In the East, shadows connote a weak light. They can be generated either when light is insufficient, or when something is blocking the light. For example, shadows are cast during the time when the sun sets or the twilight fades. Shadows also emerge from the overhang of a roof baking in the sun. That's how shadows are perceived in Japanese aesthetics as obscure and perceptual. It's like looking through a semi-transparent veil, we can't see clearly, but the vagueness is what makes it enchanting. Japan is mountainous and surrounded by the season it enjoys both a unique and natural scenery. There you can find misty snowy mountains, steamy hot springs, and splendid cloud-like cherry blossoms. You can also see the ever-changing waves in the ocean that create a mystical mirage. The Japanese love nature, and they have developed a sensitivity for the beautiful yet capricious natural environment that they live in. They incorporate the aesthetics of shadows and obscurity into every aspect of their lives. Such an aesthetic view is well presented in this poetic essay in praise of shadows, where this attitude is supported by the author's detailed description of life. Junichiro Tanizaki was one of the major writers of modern Japanese literature, and was especially known for his works on aesthetics. Some of his best-known works include A Portrait of Shunken, The Makiaka Sisters, Captain Shigemoto's Mother, and Diary of a Mad Old Man. He also translated the 11th century Japanese classic The Tale of Genji into modern Japanese. His work won several prestigious awards in Japan, including the Mainichi Publishing Cultural Award, the Asahi Prize, and the Manichi Art Award. He was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature seven times, once in 1958, and for six consecutive years from 1960 to 1965. His literary works and aesthetic explorations have influenced numerous Japanese artists and designers. In Praise of Shadows was originally published between late 1933 and early 1934. At that time, Japanese society was undergoing a period of cultural integration between the East and the West. Western advances in science and technology were making their way into the daily lives of the Japanese, bringing gradual changes to Japanese traditions. In an effort to reminisce about the good old days and the ancient aesthetics of the East, Tanizaki dissected traditional Japanese life with the belief that God is in the details, and revived the aesthetics of shadows in Japanese culture. In the following section, we'll examine the perspective of Tanizaki and explore the common aesthetic view of the Japanese people in three parts. In the first part, we'll look at the aesthetics of shadows in Japanese housing. We'll then talk about the aesthetics of shadows in the Japanese lifestyle. Finally, in the third part, we'll explore the aesthetics of shadows in the characteristics of the Japanese psyche. Part 1 the Aesthetics of Shadows in Japanese Housing As previously mentioned, In Praise of Shadows is an essay. Due to its big success, it has been republished several times. In some editions some of Tanizaki's other essays are also included, as they share the author's beliefs on aesthetics and represent the unique Japanese aesthetics of shadows. These works include Shadows, On Laziness, Love, and Eroticism, The Annoyance of Entertaining Guests, random thoughts on traveling and various toilets. This bookie will not only focus on one particular essay but will look at the body of work as a whole to present you with the details of the Japanese aesthetics of shadows. First of all, let's assess the beauty of shadows in Japanese housing. The classic beauty of subtlety and implicit detail is abundant in traditional Japanese buildings. The roofs of traditional Japanese buildings contain eaves that often cover all of the exterior walls. The eaves are so deep that they are like parasols, keeping the entire building under the roof's protection, while casting spacious shadows between the walls and the roof. Whether it's a magnificent temple or an austere farmhouse, traditional Japanese roofs all share an almost identical shape and structure. As Japanese buildings are made primarily of wood, the roof's function includes protecting the exterior walls as well as sheltering people inside from bad weather. Making the roof wider so that the eaves can reach further beyond the walls, can better prevent damage from wind, rain, and direct sunlight. Thanks to such a structure, the light